everyone, I'm Cat Coloring and welcome to today's video in the How to Color series. Today um, is a request from one of my subscribers called Color Creatively. She asked me some days ago, uh, how do you color clear glass vases and a colored glass vase or other glass images? So I promised her that I would look into it and make an episode about it. So today's episode uh, in the How to Color series is How to Color Glass. Uh, and I must admit that I had to look through a lot of my coloring books because I just couldn't remember if I had any images. I managed to find one in Beratelse from Atlantis, Tales from Atlantis. The very last page here. And we have this lovely bottle, glass bottle, uh, with a uh, little letter in it. This actually uh, is quite funny, this uh, drawing, because it reminds me of some sort of a Robinson Crusoe motif and not what I would um, connect to Atlantis. I mean, Atlantis is a sunken island with all of these wonderful, wonderful um, uh, drawings, uh, undersea drawings, portraits and, and stuff. And then we have this uh, <laughs> almost Robinson Crusoe-like bottle here. Now, I have also found another book and uh, I had to uh, turn to a uh, coloring book author, Clara Markova, and I have four of her books, four of her latest books. The, her two first books are sold out. I cannot get a hold of them, unfortunately. But this is her new book from last year, Little Secrets from My Fairy House. And if there is one thing that you can be sure to find in her books, it's actually glass, different sort of glass images here. For example, we have a well, glass, glass here, a glass made of glass with some liquid in it. I think it's supposed to be some sort of a lemonade or something. Um, we also have here a vase made of glass. You can see it see through. We can see um, some of the flowers uh, going through the glass here. We can also see not oh, this page, this one that we have some sort of a, um, well, it looks like a flask actually, uh, with some uh, fluid in it and some berries. I think it's some sort of a um, nice little, no, there's also a mushroom. Well, some sort of a uh, nice, a bit weird perhaps fluid in here. We also have a glass jar here with some, I think it's supposed to be candy. Uh, so when you um, go through her books, we also have something here made out of glass, also see-through. You can always find it in her books anyway. This vase. But with all other coloring pencil brands, so we will try something a little bit different uh, today. So glass, yeah, well, it's always see-through. So what colors do you use when you um, color glass? It could be a lot of different colors because uh, glass uh, could also be blue. It could be some sort of a green color, perhaps have some pink uh, likeness to it. This uh, particular bottle is, uh, like I said, in the ocean. So we will have to color uh, this bit of the water and then this bottle. And I um, have to look at my, not this one, the other swatch chart here with the castle art pencils where I have the blue colors. And um, the one thing that you really miss in the castle art 120 set, the soft touch ones, I've used them before uh, in my last beginner tutorial is that you can see there are hardly any light blue colors. The only really light blue is the Cerulean blue middle. And um, well, perhaps we could argue that the cobalt blue light uh, is some sort of a light color, but you can clearly see how dark it is if you press just a little bit with your pencil. And uh, the sky blue is quite dark. I know from other coloring pencil brand sets that the sky blue is usually a very, very pale color, but here there is just so much color in it. The cerulean blue light is also very, very bright. So I will have to choose, um, I have, chosen cobalt blue light and I will not have to press very hard 
to try to make the color as pale as possible. And I will also have to uh, color the water. And I think that I will use the cobalt blue and the cobalt blue deep to help with that. Because you have to some, you can't see it through the bottle, but we know that in real life we would see some of the water here. I will also be using a white pencil, of course, and I will be using a white uh, gel pen. So the white is the 72, the cobalt blue light, the 94, the cobalt blue deep, 95, and the cobalt blue, the 96. So let's get started. As you can see, we have the water surrounding the bottle and I will be using the darkest color, cobalt blue deep, the 96, to color around the bottle. And it will be easy to um, fill in here because we have these lines that Hannah Carlson has drawn. And we can see that they um, can see that we have them here. And here. And also a bit here and here. We have to remember that we see through this. And here is darker around the bottom of the bottle. But please note that I will not color this. We have this sort of outer layer of the bottle. I will leave it alone for now. And I will take the cobalt blue now. And remember, don't press too hard. This is the water here without the shadows. So I can always color the rest of the water. But we <clears throat> have this water in here. So we also have the bottle. And then we will turn to the cobalt blue light. And you will notice that I begin coloring here along this sort of edge. And also over here. And also here.
and then ease the pressure on the pencil so you don't color too much and up here I want to color and if you want to you could perhaps add a little bit of color here along this line if you want to or otherwise this will be some sort of a reflection in the bottle Now that we have colored the waves or just shown how the waves uh, are colored and the bottle you can see here that I have uh, just colored here in between with these colors I used for the cork and that was the um, yellow ochre light and the yellow ochre number 77 and 10 and then I colored on top with this cobalt blue light so that we can see here the cork shining through but not too dominant. I also just colored a little bit of this blue color here on this letter that's in uh, the bottle. But now we have to um, try to uh, make it more glass-like and if you look at a bottle you can see that there is a uh, if it's in the water there must be a, um, a darker side where we have the shades and a lighter side where we have the light coming down perhaps even sunlight so there could actually be some yellow here so I would imagine that the sun comes down from this angle which means that we have to add the cobalt uh, blue deep the dark color over here because here we have some of the shadow so I will color and lay down some of my shade over here and I will press harder because we need some of that shade color here and this is the edge and I also want to show the shade here so I will color down here but leave room enough for some reflection this means that I will also lay down, down some shade over here um, And perhaps mostly here along this edge but not so much here because here we have the light and we have the glass all the way up here Perhaps we also have a little bit here because the sunlight I think mostly hits the bottle from here. So down here we could have some some shadow.
and some of the cobalt blue light here. And to ease up on the color here, I will add some white. But I also think that I will add a little bit of some yellow here. Because if the sunlight hits the bottle over here, it will reflect in the bottle. And then it will do so right here where the sunlight comes down. So I just want to show you that we do have a little bit of the sunlight coming down here. And then I will add some white. As you can see, I have colored uh, some more. I took the cobalt blue light and color the rest of this bottle and also here because this is under the glass so it will not be as clear in the color as the top of the the cork also very very lightly um, on top of this letter uh, and the bow hair because this is also behind the glass so it is not as clear as if it was not uh, in this bottle glass bottle so I have taken and I have cheated a little bit because I have taken the Prismacolor white. And I have done so because the Carcelat white is not very good at blending. I think it's too hard to blend. So when I want to blend the Castle Art, I think that I get a much, much better result with the white Prismacolor because it's so soft. Um, so I have colored all of this with the white also and you can see how it just dampens the color here on the cork and the rest of the bottle it also helps blend these colors a bit because this is a glass bottle and not everything will be as clear as if it wasn't in a bottle and then also here along the edges with the white. I hope that it will make it a bit easier for the white gel pen. I think it's sometimes a bit difficult to cover the black lines with the white gel pen because you have to do it a lot of times to cover it completely. Uh, we have also um, just made this yellow sunlight a bit paler so it's not too dominant. Very well. And here we do have some white color. But you can also see it doesn't cover it enough, so I have to do it a couple of times. And I do it as an outline to the bottle, so we still have the bottle, the white highlight here, where I will also use the gel pen, and then a little bit of shadow, and then this outline. And I will have to wait until it dries, I can see that. And you really have to be patient with this gel pen outlining. Take some time.
So this is the result of the bottle, the glass bottle in the ocean. And um, you can see that I have done the background first with the pastel sauce, and then I colored in with the coloring pencils, the same colors as I used uh, in this glass bottle because I wanted it to reflect the both the water and the sky. So the cobalt blue light here, and then the cobalt blue and the cobalt blue deep here. Um, and I also added a bit of white to these um, small waves around the bottle. And I also just uh, colored the little bubbles uh, with the white. And then I just added a bit of the pencil sparkle pop uh, blue glitter gel pen around them. And added also some more of um, the reflections here in the bottle. And you can see here where I had colored this little uh, bow with the dark colors the i think i used the spice red and the cherry it's actually quite difficult for this posca pen and i have laid three layers already and still the color shines through so i will just have to add another layer to make it more white um so that's just uh, this proves my point with when you know that you want a highlight don't color beneath the highlight. But in such a bottle, it's actually quite, um, I think it's a bit difficult because you can just keep adding uh, these lines and then you would have to color it all white. And I wanted to um, show that it's a see-through glass bottle, but when you see through it, you will still see the sky and of course this little letter and the water in it. So here we are. I hope that you can see it. Um, you can see this is a picture I took uh, and I found it online on the net, internet. And uh, you can see here, this is a typical glass bottle with this uh, cork. And you can see we have a little letter. It's actually supposed to be a letter of paper inside. And you can see here how the water reflects through and you can see it through the bottle. Uh, you can also see a bit of light here. And that's why I added a bit of yellow here on this side. And you can clearly see the shadow side here, which is darker. So on this drawing, you could add some darker colors, uh, perhaps some dark gray to um, add to the shadow or perhaps even some black. I think that black would be perhaps a bit too much, but you could uh, do it if you wanted to enhance the shadows here. Um, I don't think I want it. I will just leave it as it is. And now it's time for us to color another item of glass, and that is a glass vase. So this request from Color Creatively specifically uh, said something about coloring glass um. vases. I want to uh, color this one and show you, but I won't be coloring the flowers. This is purely just the vase. The only thing that I would like to color are these stems from the plants. And I will use Faber Castell Polychromos for this vase. You could also use other coloring brands. I think that it's just a matter of finding uh, when it comes to this glass, I imagine this is a clear glass vase uh, to find the lightest of the blue colors that you have. And in the case of the Faber Castell Polychromas, it is the sky blue 146. I will be using the earth green yellowish 168 and a little bit of the permanent green 266 for the stems here. Um, because I want to just just color these stems. So we have the edge of the vase here and it's somewhat covered with the flowers and the stems. So you um, can see here that we have some of the stems here and I will just color them very lightly because this is a glass vase. It's see-through but the colors, of course, change when you also add water. So 
So I will just color some of them with the earth green yellowish. I think that's a huge stem right there. Um, so I think that I will color this very long stem with the permanent green. And again, just a light color because um, when it's down here in the water, I don't think that it's extremely visible like it's when it's coming up from the vase. So just light coloring. You could also later color some more, but just a light coloring. Just so that you can see that these are green. And uh, remember that um, the Faber-Castell Polychromos are oil-based pencils, which mean that we uh, will have to be careful when we blend. They are not as easily blendable as uh, wax-based pencils. So I think that we have colored the stems enough. So here we have the vase, and you can see here that Clara Markova the drawer she has uh, drawn here sometimes when it's a um, thick glass vase you have some sort of um, thickness here that you can see and then the water it doesn't get quite through to the outer edges because the vase is thick so you have this area where there is no water because this is just glass um, and water is also see-through. It doesn't have a color. But, you know, when you look at it, you can clearly see that the light reflects in the glass and then it does actually get some colors. And, it, of course, it, there will also be some shade here from the flowers and the stems uh, over the edge here. There is also uh, the matter of reflection in the glass we have to take into account. Um, there is always some sort of reflection when it comes to glass surfaces uh, from the light. And um, sometimes perhaps it's better to take a pencil. And right now I can't find my pencil. Oh, here it was. Sometimes it's the easiest way to, um, to draw the reflections first. I know that you could also just take a white uh, pen and uh, pencil, not pen, a pencil, and then color some of these, these areas uh, light. Uh, for example, if you took this one, uh, this is actually not the polychromos, it's the Prismacolor, but that's because it's so... Um, Yeah, I think it's white now. Uh, that's because it's so soft, so it's uh, a bit easier to work with. But you could, and I won't do it now, but you could uh, highlight some areas with this white pen. And then if you color on top very lightly, you would have some lighter areas in the surface here. Uh, so this uh, pudding, or whatever it is, is really big. And it must cast some sort of shadow over this beautiful vase with the flowers next to it. So I am thinking that this is the shadow side and this is the light sh uh, side. So that means that I will have more shadows and darker colors here and no white reflections. Um, but I would have the white reflections and the lighter colors here with this glass vase. Okay, so if we have to have a um, a shadow side we will have to use not only this sky blue color but also some darkers but let us begin with this sky blue color i would imagine that this as i said this is white uh, and some of the reflection is here because the glass is uh, quite thick i think i would start with the bottom here I know that water is see-through, but if you color very lightly, you can give this sort of appearance that, that we have water. But also that we um, have this glass. So you can see that uh, Clara Marco has drawn this 
line here or dotted line actually it's not drawn it's dotted so i will just and i won't put a, a lot of uh, of blue here because i think that i will have uh, some sort of reflection here i actually think that i will um, just use this blue to line it up instead of using a pencil that way i won't have to erase the pencil marks afterwards so uh, and I think I want it a bit uh, broad here because this is at the top of the vase and uh, but you can also see we have some flowers here so that means that I will have to add a little bit here with a darker color and when you go down here there is usually also some light here and I want to make room for this I know that I could just take my gel pen or Posca pen and and um, draw on top but I think that uh, I well my experience is that if I do that and I have colored something dark underneath it it takes uh, a lot of coloring with the white to cover it completely or else it gets um, it doesn't get white enough so I want here a big highlight here and I also want something here but not all the way down. You could add just a little line here of the white. So I also color here, but not, <coughs> excuse me, not uh, completely out towards the edge. So you can see I just color very, very lightly here. And here we have a flower coming down, casting a little bit of a shadow. So now I just give it a basic color of this sky blue. And so light that I bet you can hardly see it over here. Um, but you can see it here. Of course, you could also use, I think I just want something here. You could also use gray colors, but I just think that gray is a, sort of a, it's a bit dull color, these glass vases. I think that uh, blue is a much nicer color. So um, a darker color of this, the sky blue is very light. Uh, a bit of a middle color is the light ultramarine, number 140. And I will use this to these areas where I think that we need to add a little bit more of the color here among the stems of the flowers and more over here because remember this is a shadow side and here I want to color almost completely out to the edge you can see here that this, um, oh, is this such a nice cake platter or whatever here, that it shadows and stands in front of the vase. So it has to cast some sort of a shadow over here. And also down on the vase here. And this flower also. which means that it has to be darker over here. Yeah, I think that these hearts will be colored in another color. Since Clara Markova has put them there, it must be because they have a meaning. Uh, and up here, we have a lot of shadow, so I will also be using this one, the light ultramarine here. But not everywhere, because you can see here, and she has actually helped us, because you can see here that she has, I uh, hope you can see it, she has dotted this edge of the vase, and she has left room for some areas not dotted. And I think that this is where the light would hit the vase. So here we will place a highlight 
and a smaller one over here because we have a lot of flowers and we are getting nearer to the shadow side. So a little highlight here and a larger one there. And here we have this ribbon uh, of some sort and that must also make a bit of a shadow here. And uh, this shadow, because these stems are inside the vase and this is outside, so I can color on top of the green with this one to mark the shadows. That it's just a little bit darker underneath this ribbon and also this flower. So it doesn't have to be a lot, just a little bit of a darker color here. And also this is the edge here of the top of the vase probably also gives a bit of a shadow, especially over here. I think it's darker here. So I will also color on top of the green here and a little bit with the sky blue. That way you can also see that it's inside the vase, these stems and not outside. Gives it, uh, I think, a more realistic appearance. And I just color on top of the light ultramarine with the sky blue. Mm. But we will have to make it darker still over here. So um, we will have to add the um, ultramarine, which is the darkest of these uh, three colors. The Oh, it's hard to see. The 120. When you color small areas like this, it's important that you uh, sharp, sharpen your pencils because otherwise the result is, um, well, it won't be as good. So I will just color here, make it darker and also over here darker, just a little bit darker with this stem. And this flower here. And here. So as you can see here, I'm not sure that I would like to add a white gel pen here because this works nice with this um, highlights here, with these highlights. But over here, where we also have the stems and I want it to be a complete and very visible highlight here, I will probably use a gel pen so uh, to cover these areas so i know that they are covered so over here we have a lot more shadow and we will have to use this darker color and also color on top of the stems because they are inside the vase And also here and here where this cake platter is shadowing. Platter, plate, cake plate. Um, and I just go a little bit lighter here, but still with the dark color. We also perhaps should add a little bit here. So I will just add a little bit more of the light ultramarine here and also on top of these green stems. You can still see that they are green, but these shadows just makes it a bit more realistic that they are in this water. And a bit more color over here. And then ease the pressure 
so that it doesn't get too dark and then switch to the sky blue. And here I will also color on top of the stems, but lightly. So you can clearly see the, the, the green color here. But just to give it a bit more feel here, we can see that, okay, this is underwater. So you can clearly see now that we are getting somewhere with this vase. So I found actually the salmon, um, the salmon number 130. And that's because I think that the pink metal lake is um, really, really strong in the color. And I wanted something more subtle for these hearts. So I have just uh, also taken the sky blue and blended it in with the darker colors here, the light ultramarine and the ultramarine and just added a little bit more here. And then if you think that, oh, I think there is too much color over here, you can take your white, the white 101, and then you can color a bit on top, both to blend, but also to uh, lighten the color a bit and I think that that's what I will do and here I'm not just pressing lightly because I do want it to be a bit more light and at the same time I'm just blending it, it all together and I think that uh, the salmon worked fine you can see the hearts but they are not dominant in this vase And uh, it's also perhaps a good idea to take this uh, white and just color the edges of these uh, black lines because black lines um, can be difficult to um, cover completely with a white gel pen. So I like to um, add some white from the coloring pencil here to ease the job with the white gel pen. So now it's time to add the white gel pen and you can use a Posca pen or just a white gel pen. I think that it depends on how much you want to cover. And my experience with these uh, white gel pens is that um, I have to color, especially with these jelly rolls, um, I have to color a number of times to completely cover the black outlines here. So I prefer to start out with a Posca pen. Unfortunately, I don't have a um, the pointy small Posca pens. Um, I don't have them. I haven't uh, had time to buy a new one. And my old one died on me here about a month ago. So, um, But I will just try here with the Posca to just take some of these outlines here. And you can see how it really dampens this color. And um, now that I have colored with the white and there was also a bit sky blue, it's actually easy to get this um, it really looks like a, a glass edge because we have this blue color And thus adding a little bit over here, even though we have the shadow here, there could still be a little tiny highlight over here.
So I will let it dry and then I will give it another go. But in the meantime, we can color these bigger highlights with the Pusca pen. So two bigger ones here and just a line here and here. I think that I would also like to have a line here and another one here. And that's it. I mean, you could add more lines, but it also has to look, look natural. And uh, there's also, if you look at pictures of vases when the light hits them, you can clearly see that most of the highlights are in the side, especially the side towards the sunlight. And not so much in the other side, and especially not down the middle. If you want to have highlights down the middle, uh, you find it mostly in um, colored vases and not these uh, see-through glasses, glass vases. Okay, so now the vase is finished. I added just one more layer of uh, the Pusker here at the edges. And then I added a little bit with the Jelly Roll from Sakura, the white one. I also chose to add more white so that it um, actually would look the same as the highlights right here. And I also um, dotted with the white these bubbles in the water. You could use a um, perhaps a light blue gel pen, but I think that when you use... Oh, just missed two here. That w when you use them, it's difficult to... Um, to um, to match it with the, the other blue colors in such a vase. So um, I thought that it would be nicer to have these little white bubbles here. Well, this was how to color a glass vase with flowers and reflections. So as the last thing of this how to color glass, I would like to color a glass jar, but it is not going to be a clear glass jar uh, like uh, the bottle and the vase. This is going to be another color palette because uh, I have used the blue colors a lot. And uh, then I thought, well, I don't want to use gray colors because I really think that they are really boring to look at. So I wanted to do something more colorful. And then I looked at the internet and researched a little bit like I always uh, do. And I found some very beautiful uh, examples of uh, colored glass jars in pink and green and orange and yellow and dark blue, but I won't do blue. So I thought that it would be nice to have a glass jar uh, with pink colors. Also because we have some candy here and we also have this uh, uh, ribbon and bow here. So I thought that uh, what nicer colors to use than pink. And this time I will be using the Prismacolor colors. So I will be using as the lightest color Deco Pink PC 1014. And as a sort of middle color, the Blush Pink PC 928. And then as the dark color process red PC 995, 94, not 95, 94, PC 994. Um, so if you have uh, colored glass jars, some of the highlights are here in this side and I cannot show it too much because we have uh, both a, um, a bow here and we have what's inside. So um, I think that I will be able to show you uh, mostly here at uh, the top. And uh, a lot of these glass jars have highlights here in the lid uh, and not in the side, as you might think. Uh, many times we have a little highlight here and then they are mostly in the middle, actually of course, dependent on the light. But I think that I want to place them here in the middle. You can also see that the Clara Markova has uh, drawn some, what is look, it looks like shadow lines here 
and here and here and here. So I think that uh, most of the highlights will be here in the middle and here in the side also. Uh, a little bit here and then a lot of this over here will be in some sort of shadow. Perhaps also a highlight here. Um, yeah. But um, when you color such a uh, jar here, you can also see she has made some uh, lines here. The dark part is actually in the side here, again, depending on the light. So I want to make this the dark areas of this glass jar. Here is another heart. There are just hearts everywhere, but I will not be coloring uh, these hearts or the surroundings because I won't have time to do this in this video. So I will use the process red to lay down the darkest color here. And uh, these are Prisma colors and they are wax based and they just lay down beautifully in this coloring book on these pages. I must say they work really nice here. Uh, and so did the polychromas actually on the other page with the glass bars. So the darkest parts here and uh, uh, we can't see this edge over here this part of the is uh, I think this is the edge of the jar and this is the lid and we can't see this one in this side it's just covered with the bow so I think that perhaps we have some shadow here also because of this bow and then we have the lid so I know that I want highlights here in the middle which means that I will lay down and you can also see here she has marked this part of the top of the lid with, with some uh, dots and this usually means that this uh, side is in the shadow and I will also add just a little bit here and I think that I will hold the page so I can do this and over here and also over here. So now we have this perhaps a little bit down here, but please note that I'm coloring very lightly here at the top where we have most of the light compared to down here where we have a lot more of the shadow. You can also see here that it's practically, can't hardly see the dots here. Um, but over here again I think we have some shadow so I want to color this part of the, the edge of the lid here also. Okay. So that was the darkest color. Now I will use the blush pink. And uh, these two colors are actually in the same coloring family. Um, but the deco pink is not. It's actually from another coloring family. The deco peach is in this coloring family but I think that the peach color won't um, be as suitable as the Digo pink because I think it will be a bit too light and I am adding a little bit of a pressure I don't want too many layers here I just want it to yeah to be darker here so this, uh, these were the sides and the bottom of the jar. And then I will just color a bit here again on top of their process red. And then lightly, very lightly on top here, here, and everywhere I have added the process red, just a light, light layer of this blush pink. And 
And then we will have to um, add a little bit more I will take the deco pink and I will color next to these areas where I had colored with the process red. So the deco pink sort of um, marks out this area as a highlight zone. And you can see the line here. So I think that I want a line here separating from and uh, separate these two in a um, sort of upper lid highlight and a lower lid highlight here and also here so I will color here and leave room for highlight here along the edge of the lid because these edges of the lid they do have highlights and also just a little bit of the deco pink here and down here so I will leave room for a light, small highlight here along this edge. And also room for some highlight here, up here, and here. I think that I would like some more blush pink here. I also think that perhaps this blush pink should be a little bit more here. makes it a bit more blendable. Then add the deco pink here. And then add some of the deco pink here. And ease the pressure. And color on top of this. So we have a highlight here. Perhaps we have to have a little bit of a dark color under this one. Yeah, I think it works nicely. Um, also here. So you can see that we have a little highlight here and a line here. I think there is some more shadow here. So I am. Um, and down here. And also this one should perhaps just be with a bit of a shadow here. Oh, have to be careful here. So the blush pink here to sort of separate these parts of the edge of the lid so that we get a highlight here and here. We have a lot of highlights in this jar here, 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 and a bit here in the middle. 
smaller area because we do have the bow and I think that it gives more of a shadow to this side and on the other side. And now it's just a question of layering and also adding the white PC 938 to uh, lighten up some of the, um, the areas. And also down here, I will just, here you can see here, I will just add the deco rose. Lightly. And have more in on uh, a bit more pressure here on the sides, and then ease the pressure towards the middle, so that it will be most see-through. If you can see that here in the middle, but you can still see the color. So I will probably just blend this with the white. And remember, a bit more color here at the sides and then ease the pressure so it's very light here in the middle of the jar and then just layer 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 okay so i decided anyway to uh, color this bow here and the candy inside and also this little sign with the raspberry on it um so i used if you want to know, I used the Cream PC914 and Jasmine PC1012 and Sand PC940 for the sweets inside of this. And also here for this little sign and this one. And then I used the 90% French Gray to add a little bit of shadow here. And for the raspberry, I just used the Crimson Red PC 924 and Crimson Lake PC 925 for this raspberry. And then I used Prussian Green and a little bit of Apple Green for the green here. And I used a little golden gel pen to this little string here. So now you can see I have uh, blended and colored some more. And uh, what's left is just to, um, because you can see this, so this is a sort of a pink also see-through, but if you want to um, add a bit to the illusion of this being a pink, you can use this very light deco pink and just color on top of the sweets here. So that you can see that this is inside the jar, this pink glass jar. You can see the little hearts here, I just colored them with the pink PC929. Um, and since I left room for some white here, highlight here um you can color on top of this with this pink just lightly doesn't have to be much and then just on top here again with the white so it's just a bit brighter than the others and um then we have to um use the Posca pen yet again but actually before that I think that I forgot to um, add the white here on top of the black lines it makes it I think just a little bit easier when you add the Posca that if you have already added some white to make this black line and a little bit paler
and normally I wouldn't add the white now because I need to color everything around this jar but for the sake of this tutorial I will do it so again the lines here and here and And you can see it doesn't cover it completely, so we will have to add another layer of um, this Posca pen. And because this is also with black lines I will also color this and then you can see when it dries we will give it another layer of the white and then it's actually finished and we'll just have to correct a bit here with the bow well that's it for today thank you for joining me in this how to color episode on how to color glass today we colored this glass bottle in a uh, Tales from Atlantis, where you can see both the note, but also the sky and the sea through the bottle and with a lot of reflections. We also colored a glass jar, a pink glass jar with some candy inside of it and also uh, reflections. And finally, we also colored this glass vase with the flower stems we can see through it. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Please like and subscribe to my channel. And I really hope that you will join me in the next episode in this series where I will show you how to color sun rises and sunsets. Have a nice day. Happy coloring. Bye.